Hello you guys, welcome back to another video. Welcome back to my channel, long time no see. I know I have been pretty absent on here. This is probably the longest that I've gone without posting a video on my channel in three years now, almost four years. It's kind of crazy. I uh, haven't taken a break from posting for so long, longer than a week or two. Um, but it's been over three weeks since I posted a video. You may have noticed, you might not have noticed, you may not care. Um, but I do kind of like to take a week or two break usually around the holiday time anyway. This holiday season for me, it was really busy, crazy. There was a lot going on. I hope to be able to share with you guys soon. Um, but just in my personal life, there was a lot going on. Um, so I especially needed to take some time away from pulling my camera out every second, filming, editing and uploading. It's very time consuming. And I knew my winter break away from school, I really wanted to take to be away from like everything and actually have a break and recharge because most teachers when they have a break, they're actually on break, but with YouTube, I feel like I'm always feeling that pressure to be filming and uploading, and it's really, really hard for me to take a break from it. And don't get me wrong, I love it. I wouldn't do it if I didn't enjoy it, but I still do feel that pressure to post consistently for you guys, just because I know you guys expect videos from me, so I wouldn't normally go three plus weeks without posting. I've just been kind of in a rut when it comes to YouTube lately. I don't really know my place in YouTube anymore. I started my YouTube channel, like I said, three and a half years ago. And when I started my YouTube channel, I was this 23 year old first year teacher who cared about her classroom aesthetic and cute teacher outfits and my teaching journey was like the only thing that mattered to me. Like it was just the biggest part of my life. And obviously I'm 27 now, I'm turning 28 this year. My priorities have shifted. My life has changed a lot in the last four years. I've changed a lot. And so that's not really who I am anymore. I'm not that same 22, 23 year old girl that started her teachergram accounts. Um, and honestly, my interests have changed too. I'm still a teacher, I still love teaching and I love sharing about it, but it's definitely not the only thing that I care about. It's not my number one priority, my number one focus, um, like it used to be. And that's just, that's life. Life ebbs and flows, you go through changes. Um, your interests change, your passions change, your priorities change. I'm babbling. Also, sorry, this is like the first five minutes of the video. I'm just like getting into a deep talk right at it. But I just feel like it's been so long since I've come on here. I just have so much that I want to say to you guys. Um, but welcome back. If you're new here, I'm Madison. So glad that you're here. Let me just start off on like such a serious note. I am going to be vlogging my week this week and taking you guys along with me. But yeah, I just kind of wanted to be more real. I feel like I have been doing some reflecting on what I've been posting and on my channel. Um, just reflecting over the past like years and how my videos have transformed. And I really do love the directions that my videos have been going. And I love how much more authentic and genuine my videos have gotten over the years. I feel like my first videos were all focused on aesthetic. I really cared how everything looked. I wanted my classroom to be perfect. Um, and I wanted my videos to portray that as well. I wanted my videos to be perfect. And um, I know people love watching that. I feel like when I started in the teacher gram world, I loved seeing all those like glamorous classrooms and these teachers that made teaching seem so glamorous. Um, but now that I'm a few years into the profession, I've realized it's not glamorous and I would like to show the realistic side of teaching. I don't want to portray this job as something that it's not to thousands of people watching. Um, so that's also why my videos have kind of shifted over the years from being a young girl and kind of naive about what the teaching world is like. And now I kind of just real, like this is what it is. I talk about the ups and the downs. Obviously I am still teaching after three, four years and I love it still but I don't portray this as like this magical job where the only thing that matters is how cute your classroom is, how cute your outfits are, and how perfect your lesson plans are and perfect activities and all of that that kind of goes into when you're a new teacher. Um, I just want to keep it more real on here. I just want this to be more of just like a documentation of real life. I feel like that's what everyone's wanting. I love most of the people I follow on YouTube and on Instagram now 
they're super down to earth, real, genuine people. And I love that. That's what I want to see. That's what I want to portray on my channel. And it can be really scary. I feel like people talk all the time about how YouTubers, you know, they're always trying to be someone they're not, you know, they're being, you know, disingenuine. And it is sometimes really hard to pull out a camera, film your entire life and put it online for thousands or millions of people to watch and keep it 100% real, unedited, and genuine. I challenge you to do that if you think it's, you know, so easy to do. It's really, really hard to film yourself and put yourself um, out there online. So that's something that I am going to challenge myself to do in 2024 is to be more genuine online, to show the real life, the good, the bad, the ugly. Um, and that might not be always the most aesthetic, the most pretty, thing, the most pretty videos. Um, I do love editing and making my videos like romanticize my life. I love making the videos fun to watch, enjoyable to watch. Um, but I think it's also important to, you can romanticize your life, but also be realistic with what you're showing to the outside world and make sure that you are showing your real self in your real life. Um, not making it out to be something that it's not. So I hope that makes sense. I am excited for all these new videos coming in 2024. I'm not leaving YouTube, but I definitely think that break was much needed and it won't be my last one, that's for sure. If you guys are new here, it means so much to me that you watch and are subscribed. Even if you haven't been watching me for the past three, four years, it means so much that you found me and have stuck along for this journey. And if you have been watching for the last three or four years, Thank you for being here. Thank you for supporting. It means so much to me to have your support um, because you've watched me go through a lot of phases um, and completely change over the last few years. All right, one of my kids came in. Um, but anyway, I will stop babbling. I just kind of had a lot on my mind, on my heart that I wanted to share. And yeah, there's going to be a lot of new things coming to this channel in the next year, couple years down the road. I never really knew what my channel would look like, if I would even continue to make videos over years and years down the road, or if I would stop making videos once I stopped teaching. Um, but I did stop teaching, I continued to make videos and I loved it, and a lot of you guys stuck around for it. Um, and that's the only reason I do it is because I enjoy it and I have loved getting to know you guys and making so many online friends over the years. So I want to continue to do it and and yeah, I hope that you guys are going to stick around. Although my content has changed over the years and it will continue to change, I hope that you guys will continue to hang out, stick around while I find my place in this YouTube world. Um, but definitely let me know what you guys want to see. A lot of you guys that have been here for a long time have watched my content change. A lot of you guys are new. I'd love to know what kind of videos you would like to see from me. Obviously, I post a lot of vlogs, a lot of week in my life. So to me, those are the most natural, easy videos for me to film is just kind of take you guys along with me through my weeks. And those are the videos that I love watching. I love watching super long, chatty, in-depth videos of people's lives. Um, I prefer those over like quick cut short form ones. I feel like Instagram is for all that quick short form 30 second content and YouTube is where I go to like chill, relax, sit back with a snack or my dinner and watch someone's like hour long vlog of their entire week. So let me know what you guys come to YouTube for. Okay, it is freezing outside. Sorry, I kept getting cut off trying to film today. Um, I kept having people come in my room. It's always awkward when they walk in and you like have a camera out, so. I tried my best, but today was just one of those busy days because this is our first week back at school. I don't know if I mentioned that. <laughs> this is our first week back at school after being on break for two weeks. So it's been really busy just getting back into it. And we had a meeting after school today. We had a meeting also during lunch today. So many meetings. So yeah, just been a busy day, but it's going to be a good week. Actually today it was a really good day just getting back into it. I feel really refreshed after taking a couple weeks off and my co-teacher and I are kind of switching things up in our classroom, um, which I can kind of talk to you guys more about tomorrow. <laughs> now I'm driving and our kids are doing so good. We were talking today about 
just like how much they've grown, how independent they've become and how big they are. And it's crazy that second half of the year I've always heard like in kindergarten, that's when they show like so much growth. And it's true. I feel like just coming back from winter break, they seem so much older <laughs> and they're just doing so good. They're so, I don't know, they're just like so much more mature already, I feel like. All right, I'm gonna head home. I'm so tired. Kyle's home, but he works tonight, so he's leaving a couple hours. So I'm just gonna like soak up the next couple hours with him at home and then probably just have a really chill night and be in bed by like eight o'clock. <laughs> Happy Tuesday. I was low key hoping for a snow day today, but it didn't happen. <laughs> it's okay. But it is raining again. It's been like raining all week, and yesterday it was like icing a little bit. So you never know. Sometimes they call school because of ice. Um, but it is supposed to snow today at like 2 o'clock. I'm pretty sure. Me and my co teacher have been like checking the weather like crazy. It says there's an occasional wintry mix likely to continue. For the next few hours but it doesn't really look like we're supposed to get much snow at all here in st louis it kind of just looks like we're just gonna get like half an inch maybe but i don't know it's supposed to snow like all night tonight sometimes they call school just precautionary even if we don't get much snow so fingers crossed we haven't had a snow day yet and i love snow days it's like the best ever it's gonna like stay home all day cozy up while it's snowing outside is the best but I don't know. I'm not getting my hopes up because it's not supposed to snow that much. So, and this is my first year at this school. So I don't know. You never know like how eager schools are to call off. Like some schools will call off for like a little bit of snow. Some schools, it's like, it has to be blizzarding outside for them to call off. So we'll kind of feel out how this school is. Made my green smoothie this morning. This is actually just like a hodgepodge of stuff. It's like apples, mangoes, pineapples, spinach, Greek yogurt, honey, banana. I think that's it. Just a bunch of stuff, but it tastes really good. Oh, and then I've been putting protein powder in here. I've just been using that organic life, I think is what it's called, vanilla protein powder. It's really good. All right, let's head inside. It is 12.30 and my co-teacher is taking the students to specials. It's kind of fun because we're switching up a lot of stuff. I mentioned this yesterday, but um, since there's two of us, we split a lot of duties. Like I used to take the kids to specials. She would pick them up, stuff like that. So we were like, why don't we be a little crazy and switch it up for the second half of the year. So now she takes them. I pick them up. I don't know. It's just like, it changes things up. And then as far as our small groups that we do in the classroom, um, for small group instruction, we switched groups as well. So that's also really refreshing because I've been working with the same 10 students since September, October, whenever we started our small groups. And so has she. And so we decided to switch, um, which is also just good because I haven't been able to work with those kiddos. So it's good for them to get a different teacher's instruction, you know, and it's also good for me, able to, me to be able to see where they're at. Um, obviously we do a lot of whole groups still in here and I'm constantly working with all the kids, but for that like hour, hour and a half of small group time in the morning, I'm usually just with the same 10 kiddos. So we've been switching that up. And so I have a new group of kids and it's actually been really refreshing to have like a whole new group of kiddos to work with. Um, and we switched, we base our small groups based off of like high and low and reading and math. So originally I had the lower group in reading, she had the high and then in math she had the low group and I had the high. And so we just switched. So now I have the high for reading and the low for math. And I know sometimes people get like really offended whenever I say high and low, but if you're a teacher, that's just kind of how we categorize our groups. We have students that are better readers than others. So the better readers are a little bit more advanced with our curriculum. So we put them all together. That way we don't have to differentiate teaching to 20 kids. So we can easily split up. And luckily, this isn't the case with every class, but luckily with our class, it's almost exactly 50-50. We have like 10, 11 kiddos that are already on unit three in foundations. And then we have 10 or 11 kiddos that are still on unit one. So um, that's just where they're at academically. 
neither of them are wrong or right. It just is what it is. They're five. So we meet them where they're at academically. Um, and yeah, so now I've been taking the higher kids. So I've been teaching a whole new unit. So it's just kind of refreshing instead of teaching unit one and continuing on with unit one and unit two, I get to kind of jump up to unit three um, since I have the higher kids. And then with math, <laughs> I we don't have, we're not on a different unit with math, but we do differentiate for some of our lower kids um, with some easier material. So instead of doing all like the really advanced work in math, now I have the lower group. So now I'm kind of like buckling down a little <laughs> and meeting them where they're at. So I hope that kind of makes sense. Um, that's pretty common you'll find in classrooms to categorize the students based off their academic needs, um, which is really nice because there's two of us. So whenever I used to teach by myself, I would have to meet with a lot smaller groups. I wouldn't meet with 10 kids at one time. I would usually meet with maybe five kids at a time and I'd have to rotate every day. I would see a different group while the rest of my class was doing independent work. But since there's two of us, I can meet with 10 while she meets with the other 11 and vice versa. And we can meet with all the kids at the same time. It's really, really nice. Um, obviously some kids are doing independent work um, during that time as well, but hope that makes sense um but that's just been kind of a fun way for us to switch up things in the classroom kind of refreshing coming back and just having a little bit of change but our kids are doing so good like I said I think yesterday in the car they've grown so much we're so proud of them we cannot believe like how independent they are and my co-teacher has been teaching kindergarten for a few years so she um told me at the very beginning of the year she's like oh just wait like that second half of the year is magical the kindergartners come such a long way and everything they say is true like that august through october is definitely the hardest the first few months of school it's really hard because they're all so new to the concept of school they're all such just little babies they all just turned five and yeah it's just they're not they lack all independence and they don't know anything and by the time but the thing is their brains are such sponges at this age so by the time they get to january just within five to six months they're a whole different kid. It's so cool. They're just so much more independent. They're so much smarter. They're so much more mature. Um, yeah, they've just learned so much. So definitely what they say about kindergarten is true. Um, but like my co-teacher said, but then you have to say goodbye to your class in May and you get a whole new group of kindergartners in August. So it's kind of like, oh, like defeating because you work so hard on this one group of kids just to send them off to another teacher. Um, and so I told her, I said, I wonder what first grade's like. I taught second grade, so obviously it's a whole different world. But I feel like first grade would be really great because you get all of those kindergartners that they're still young and sweet and innocent, but they've had a whole year under their belt, so they're a lot more independent than the incoming kindergartners. So I don't know. I've taught second grade. I've taught kindergarten. I'm like, maybe one year I'll teach first grade just to kind of see what that's like. Let me know if you're a first grade teacher and if you love it. I know the first grade teachers that I've talked to here, they love it. Like it's their sweet spot. First grade is just like magical, they say, because of that reason. They've had a whole year of kindergarten and they come in and they're so much more independent. Um, and then at the end of first grade, they said it's like crazy how much they've grown, which is true because I know my second graders coming in are pretty independent. They can usually even like read on their own. So yeah, I definitely think maybe I want to teach first grade one year. Like outfit of the day wearing my same little sweater from Amazon you guys already know I have this in like four different colors and then just wearing some flare leggings with my sambas just keeping it comfy cozy today it's pretty cold out I, I'm losing all hope that we'll have a snow day tomorrow though because it went from like a few inches to now like 0.5 inches and now it's saying we're only gonna get snow from like two to four when it used to be from like one to 9 p.m. So I think the snow is like slowly passing us by. So I've lost all hope for a snow day tomorrow. Kind of a bummer, but that's okay. It's supposed to snow next Monday, of course, and it's Martin Luther King Day. So we're not even in school. So it's supposed to snow like three inches next Monday. We're like, of course, that would be our snow day probably, but we're already off that day. So it's like, I don't even want snow if I'm not gonna get a snow day. You know what I mean? Like if it snows on the weekend, I'm like, no. Oh. Like I don't want snow on the weekend. I want it on the weekday so I can have a snow day. Well, <laughs> no snow day. We are up and at it bright and early. I let myself get too excited and we're gonna have a snow day. Should have done it. We did get quite a bit of snow. It snowed pretty hard from like two o'clock all the way until like midnight, but 
it's just not cold enough here so it didn't stick that's the problem but i know in other places like kansas city they got a ton of snow and i know some teachers were posting that they were off school yesterday and today so i'm very jealous <laughs> if you live in kansas city in st louis we just didn't get that much that's okay <laughs> whatever i guess i'll go to work today all right i couldn't be bothered to put on like anything cute today <laughs> jeans or anything like that it's so funny how much my style changes in the winter i just become like a sweats girly in the winter in the summer i'm wearing like dresses and skirts every single day and i just i don't know i just can't be bothered in winter time because i'm cold i'm tired i don't know i got like the winter uglies you know when you're like pale in the winter you don't feel good about yourself um, but I have been living in these Amazon, Amazon everything pretty much, but Amazon, um, two piece sets. So this is like a long sleeve knit set with matching pants, just wearing some boots. And then this is a long cardigan from Amazon as well. I've been loving long cardigans just to throw on over everything. Just kind of pulls it all together. Honestly, now that I'm looking at it, it kind of looks like a robe because of the color of it. For some reason, it kind of like gives me robe vibes, but that's okay i'm gonna wear it um it's so comfy so i just at this point would just rather be super comfy at work over anything so we're gonna rock the <laughs> pajama look apparently today Okay, I'm gonna sit down and eat my lunch. I ordered some bread co. I was craving bread co. I've actually been craving bread co for like a week. So I finally caved. I've been door dashing way too much lately i don't know if it's because it's like cold out and i have just no motivation for anything lately but i've been door dashing like multiple times a week it's pretty bad but i'm really excited for this it's a little, probably a little cold i got delivered early and the kids just went to specials i get their napa almond chicken salad sandwich and then a bread bowl with coffee cutter soup so good such a cozy winter meal. So I'm going to sit down and eat this for the 45 minute break. We have a student teacher today, so that's been kind of fun. Um, she isn't like a full-time student teacher. She's been bouncing around. She's in a bunch of different classrooms every single week. So we have her in our classroom today and then next week um, for a little bit. So kind of nice having an extra set of hands. And I always remember when I was student teaching how like scary it was walking into classrooms every day that you didn't know anybody and I don't know I'm trying to be nice to her and just welcoming and give her fun stuff to do because I remember it was always kind of intimidating walking into a school walking into a classroom and yeah just being there all day long. I also kind of miss my student teaching days. I had like the best student teaching experience ever. I um was student teaching with my own fifth grade teacher so if you guys remember i mean if you've been here for a long time you know i've told this story a lot but i student taught with my own fifth grade teacher she's the best we still keep in touch i love her so much um and it was just like the best experience i feel like some people have student teaching experiences that like make them drop out of college and pursue a completely different degree um but like my student teaching experience was so great it really like inspired me and made me want to be a better teacher um, let me know if you're a teacher what your student teaching experience was like but I do remember having practicums in college and being in I think we were in a different school like every semester every like five or six weeks we'd go to a different school and have to be in a different grade level it was really good because I had a ton of experience in college like I remember I was in classrooms like first grade second grade third grade all the way up to sixth grade and every semester I'd be in a different grade different class I had some good experiences and some like really really awful ones with horribly mean teachers like some teachers out there should not be allowed to host practicum students college students um 
because I just had some horrible experiences. If you guys want to hear about some of my horrible practicum experiences in college, I'd be happy to tell the story because now it's been like five years since that. But it made me almost want to stop pursuing teaching because the teachers were, they just treated me so awful. They just treated me like I was so much more below them. They bossed me around. They would yell at me. Um, also, some of the schools that I would go into were just like horribly run. Um, the students were always great. Like I always loved being around the kids, but some of the adults, it was really rough to be around. Um, but luckily, my student teaching experience like saved me. My student teacher, my co-teacher was phenomenal um and I learned so much from her but yeah let me know if y'all y'all want to hear those stories I could go on and on about my college experiences in classrooms so I always try to give students like good experiences when they come into my classroom I mean I keep it real I mean they'll I always tell them like you'll realize right away if you want to be a teacher by just observing in a classroom my teaching college, they always said like 50% of students would drop out that first semester just from observing, like not even teaching, just observing in classrooms. You'll realize right away if this is something that you can handle or not. Sometimes I can't believe I'm still like four years into my teaching career and like still going at it because there are some days where I look at this and I can't believe I do this all day, every day. But then there's a lot of other days where I'm like, I can't imagine doing anything else either. So. I don't know. I feel like it's definitely a love-hate relationship with this career. Teaching is so hard, but it's also so rewarding and so fun sometimes. So exhausting other days. I don't know. It's it's a tough job. I also love it and get really excited when students come into my classroom. I'm like, oh, you want to be a teacher? <laughs> I get all excited. But I make sure to keep it real with them and tell them all the positives and the negatives of teaching. Because we definitely do need more good teachers out there. So I would never want to sway anyone from going into teaching if that's something that you have a passion for, an interest in, because a lot of people love teaching and they teach for 10, 15 plus years. So I think it's definitely not for everybody, but it is for some people. So I never want to sway anybody away from teaching, but I definitely keep it real whenever I have student teachers in here, or high school students that are interested in teaching, stuff like that. Enough babbling, I'm going to finish my lunch, eat up. And we have about 30 minutes left till the kiddos come back. All right, I just got home and it is going on seven o'clock. I had to stay late today because we had another newbie meeting, which I've talked about before since I'm new to the school. All of the, I think first and second year teachers have to attend monthly newbie meetings is what they call them. And we just all get together, like all the new people in the entire school, not just my grade level. So there's like, seventh grade history teachers and PE teachers and it's really fun getting together with everybody but it is like rough staying late we stay until like 6 30 6 45 um but they do always feed us so I can't really complain they fed us um a big Thanksgiving feast on, in November our last meeting and then they fed us Chinese food tonight for the Chinese New Year <laughs> so I will say they always spoil us and they gave us all the gift and everything. But yeah, I think it's really cool that the school does something like that. It just gets all the new people together so they feel less alone. Um, but I am really tired by the end of the day, so it's hard to stay late. Just doing some skincare. I just, the pad that you saw me put across my face was a glycolic acid peel pad from Colleen Rothschild. I did get these sent to me just being honest, I got all the Colleen Rothschild products sent to me. Um, they're not paying me, but they just sent them to me just to be nice. And I love them. I've also been using their vitamin C brightening serum. Really like that as well. And then I also have been using their moisturizer. I am like scary pale this time of year. Like I'm looking myself in the viewfinder and I'm scary pale. Like I am almost see-through. This happens every time. In winter every year around this time I get like so ghostly pale and it's like I need to put on a fake tan or something but then it looks weird because you look kind of weird being like super tan middle of January but it is kind of scary being so pale and my skin gets so dry in winter I just I don't thrive in winter I don't know if you're like this too I mean I feel like most people probably don't but I, my skin gets so dry, so I'm constantly breaking out. Like most of my breakouts on my face and on my body are due to dry skin, I've realized over the years, um, which is just so annoying. There's not much you can do about it. I moisturize and moisturize 
and it's like just because of the weather it dries me out and I swear the second that it gets warm and sunny my skin clears up so that's why I call it the winter uglies because I'm always pale and dry and breaking out <laughs> and I just like don't feel good I don't feel like myself it's just always a rough time in the winter Kyle and I have been talking about our potential move in a couple years we don't know my husband's a doctor he's in his second year of residency so we don't know what the future holds we we may very well end up staying right here in st louis um whenever he's done with residency or he could get a job elsewhere he could get a job elsewhere in missouri or in a different state we don't know um so we always talk about like the possibility of moving and i told him i said if we're moving we're moving somewhere warm somewhere south like I cannot do the cold anymore like I love Missouri I love living in St. Louis because where my family is but if we had a choice and I could pick up all my family and move us all somewhere I'd probably pick somewhere warm all year round because I'm just a lot happier person <laughs> in warm weather and in the sun but if I had the choice I'd probably choose I don't know, Florida Texas or I don't know anywhere south okay I Honestly, it's seven o'clock and I'm like about to put on pajamas and pop into bed and just like veg out the rest of the night because they've had us dinner. So dinner's all taken care of so I can just kind of chill out the rest of the night. My girls, if you hear them being crazy, they do this. They're just like fighting in the bathroom. Mainly Mia's instigating. They just fight for like 10 minutes and then they stop, but it's on the hour, every hour they do this. So in the background of my videos, that's what you always hear. All right, I don't know why I'm walking out of my towel. <laughs> I'll get dressed. All right, I'm literally already in bed and feeling so tired. I'm not kidding, it's like 7.05. Um, I just turned on some Seinfeld. Seinfeld has been my new, not new, but my current comfort show. I have been watching Seinfeld since last year. I started it for the first time, like from the beginning last year. Didn't think I would like it because I'm a big Friends fan. So I always thought that like you had to like one or the other, like you're either a Friends fan or a Seinfeld fan. And um, I just didn't think Seinfeld was like my type of show, but I actually love it. It's so funny. Give it a chance if you think you're a Friends fan and won't like it. It's completely different than Friends. I don't even really, I guess the only reason that they're compared is because they're both like a sitcom about a group of friends in New York City. Like obviously that is a similarity, but other than that, the show is completely different. Completely different. Um, it's really, really good. It's just like a really easy to watch, lighthearted, funny show. So I've been turning that on every night when Kyle's not here. Because when Kyle's here, we usually watch a movie or we watch a show that we're watching together. Um, we're actually watching The Office together right now, which is another like lighthearted sitcom. We just love those. But yeah, when he's not here, I watch Seinfeld. Probably just gonna like scroll on my phone, gonna put in my retainer and just veg out. Mia is being crazy, so I let her outside and she's playing with the neighbor's dog. So it's like freezing outside and she does not care. She will be outside for hours, even when it's like 10 degrees. I swear, she was made for winter. She loves cold weather she won't come in I'll go out there and call her name she will not come in so she's outside playing <laughs> Nala like her mother is cuddled up in bed right now um so yeah we're all about to probably just have like an early night and yeah we'll see you guys in the morning all right happy Thursday we are halfway through the day today it's actually been going by pretty fast thought I would catch you up on kind of what we are learning in kindergarten right now um as far as content we are teaching shapes in math which we started in december i believe maybe november i think like early december we started shapes so we're teaching um like all about flat 2d and 3d shapes um we did some building with shapes today i'll show you kind of what our slides look like so every day we go over flat shapes, 3D shapes, um, we go over all the sides and corners, faces on shapes. It's our little warm up. And then we did some building with shapes. So we've been getting out these tanagram blocks and they've been able to have them at their tables and just doing some fun building. So we gave this worksheet to them and they had to use tangrams to make all of those different types of hexagons. Actually been doing a really, really good job with that. And then for 
PBL, we are starting our zoo unit, which our class is really excited for. Obviously, kids love all things animals and zoo. So we've been talking all about the St. Louis Zoo, um, talking about different animals and their habitats. And for our PBL project, we're going to kind of like expand on the St. Louis Zoo. So kind of like what type of things would they add to the zoo if they had a choice? And then we always have a writing prompt. Today we're going to do some research on Pebble Go. Pebble Go is a really fun app um, if you haven't used it before with your class where kids can kind of just go on and research all different topics and they do have a topic or a um, little subject bar that's all about animals so they can go in and search all about animals so they're kind of having like a free research day today um, and then we always do a read aloud as well. And then in reading like I said we switch our small groups for reading so um, we, my group is on unit three, almost unit four of our foundations. And if you haven't heard of foundations, this is what it looks like. This is our teacher manual. So just to give you kind of a peek at it, if you've never seen anything like it, the teacher manual is like very written out. They tell you kind of exactly what your day is going to look like, what to start with and what to finish with. Um, so I just pull this out every single day. And then I also have been printing off some other types of like supplemental work for them to do. So we would just started learning all about Magic E and how that makes the vowels say their name. And so I printed off, I just found these on Teachers Pay Teachers, just some work that has to do with Magic E. So they really like doing like cut and paste stuff or color or fill in the blank, stuff like that. And actually I found this fun activity to do today if they finish up their animal research for PDL. I found a couple of these little animal sight word color by code worksheets. So it just has a bunch of sight words at the bottom with colors next to it and they have to use that code to color the picture. So I have an elephant one and then a giraffe one. Let me know if you guys do any fun activities in your classroom about like animals and stuff like that. Um, just because, I don't know, I've been trying to find some more fun activities or crafts or projects that I can add in to the PBL unit. Um, just because animals, that's such a fun topic. Kids just love it. They eat it up. They get excited every day for PBL. So I've been kind of trying to find some really fun animal stuff to go over. Um, our PE teacher at our school, his wife actually is one of like the gorilla, the ape keepers at St. Louis Zoo. So they said every year they have her come in and she does like a whole presentation over her job and what she does, like working with the apes and the gorillas and stuff like that. She's awesome. Um, and she always brings in paintings. They said that the gorillas like paint themselves and give it to the classrooms to keep. So I'm really excited for that. <laughs> and I think she's coming in a couple months. And then our, our zoo unit is like a few months long. It's really long. We're going to go on a field trip to the St. Louis Zoo, I believe in March or April. So a lot of our kids are so excited for that because I was surprised a lot of our kids said that they'd never been to a zoo before. So when I told them that we were going to the zoo, they like lit up. So that'll be really fun, really cute, just like getting to take our whole class to the zoo um, when the weather hopefully gets a little bit warmer. But yeah, that's kind of just a look into our day. The mornings are really busy. We do reading, small groups, and math back to back. And then when we get back from specials, our day is a little bit more flexible, a little bit slower. It's not so jam packed. We come back and we have like independent time, um, independent reading time. We have rest time. We do Hegarty, which is like whole group on the carpet. And then they go to specials. When they come back from specials, we have recess and then we do PBL. And that's pretty much the end of our day. And PBL is always kind of like a fun project base learning so not super structured it's a lot more fun for the kids I think um so yeah I always look forward to the second half of our day because <laughs> I think they're a little bit more fun um obviously reading and math is fun but it's just a little bit more structured you know so um but yeah that's kind of what our days are looking like kindergarten is going really great they're doing really good and yeah I just can't believe I'm a kindergarten teacher some days I'm like oh my gosh like I'm really doing this thing like whenever I was in college I always swore that kindergarten was the one grade that I would never teach and here I am out here loving it it's just such a fun grade to teach the curriculum is actually so much more fun than I thought it would be I always picture kindergarten as just like coloring and crafts all day and like teaching kids how to use scissors but it's like 
yeah that might be like the first month of it but they grow so fast after that and then you really hit the ground hard with kindergarten i mean you teach them literally all of the foundation all the foundational skills that they need to know to go on to other grades so i don't know i feel like i'm actually teaching more than i've ever taught even whenever i taught older grades so yeah it's really fun <laughs> today I'm not gonna lie I woke up so tired so sleepy and it has not gotten better <laughs> I have been so I don't know just so tired throughout the entire day like just so zoned out <laughs> I feel like all day luckily today's Friday which my teacher my team teacher and I we do fun Friday which is exactly how it sounds our entire day is just fun we just do games we do centers go noodles, we do some crafts, just a bunch of fun stuff. Like I said, I thought kindergarten was more like crafts and fun every day, and it's really not it. We have a pretty rigorous schedule, so it's really nice on Fridays. We kind of adjusted our schedule ourselves just to kind of, one, give us a break because our days are so busy, and give the kids a break because, again, they're five. They deserve to have days that are just for fun. So yeah, today was just a lot of fun. We did a craft in the morning. We read the book, The Mitten. If you guys haven't read that, it's a really, really cute book. And it's kind of has like a sequencing activity that goes along with it. And then they got to decorate their own mitten. Um, and then yeah, we just had centers during math. They got some time to play on their iPads today. Some time to play with Play-Doh. We did another color code picture, um, a color by sight word picture. They really love those. Played with some toys today out of our little um, toy carpet over there. So we did have indoor recess twice today because it has been storming outside all day. It's just been like a really dark and gloomy day. So I've been feeling dark and gloomy all day. So I cannot wait to go home and take a nap. It's Friday, so I get to sleep in tomorrow, but yeah, I am going to end off this vlog here. Sorry I'm ending it off on such like a tired, sleepy note, but I hope you guys enjoyed this week in my life. I love filming these for you guys, and I'm so happy to be back after taking a few weeks off of posting on YouTube. I hope you guys are excited for some new 
videos coming your way. Comment down below how your Christmas and your holiday season was, if you did anything fun, and what you're up to in the new year. I would love to hear it. Thank you for watching. I love and appreciate you guys as always, and I will see you in my next video. Bye. I see it in your eyes. Yeah, I can read the signs. You need to get away. It's time we make a change. Oh, you know you love.